You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Off Planet Radio, I'm Andy Noggins, and uh, we're going to launch into something very interesting. We have um, two incredible guests with us, and Emily is here as well, and uh, so here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I laughed out loud. <laughs> Should we do that over again? <laughs> no, I'm just leaving. That was good. Second take. <laughs> no. No, it's good. <laughs> no. So uncool. Anyway. Um, so here we are in, uh, this weird season of August, the dog days, uh, the pre -clips, that's, that's what I'm calling it. Lots of weird energy and weather anomalies and people anomalies and strange things flowing through the brew. And as we kind of go into what's going to culminate with the, uh, black hole sun eclipse on the 21st, we're just seeing this ramp up. We just went through the lunar eclipse and... <laughs> What's really interesting is this was a conversation on Facebook today. I know people were really, really attached to these things, these lunar, solar, uh, matrix type energies that are either harbingers of um, doom or uh, reasons for celebratory revelry. But we have to remember something. We live in a construct and a lot of these things are staged, they're superficial, they're artificial, and they're designed to pull you into a place where you lose your equilibrium and center balance. So I caution on that, and quite frankly, it annoys some people, but you need to be aware of your surroundings on every level, and that includes the planetary level. So that's kind of what's going on. We are in a phase of development right now in terms of uh, bringing out the new platform, which should launch sometime. Oh God, I hate to say dates, but we'll go anyway with September, probably mid to late September, we'll launch the new platform. And that will be you. That will be you folks participating in a very meaningful way in, in bringing out some new levels to the work because we can't do all this in the public view anymore. We need to pull into some safe spaces and we need some room to create and we need room for you to participate. We want to do that in a safe environment. So that's coming as well. That's kind of the, the dream casting that we're doing right now for um, the future of this program and all the things that we're going to do. And uh, with that, my, 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 my very special friend and co-host, Emily, is going to introduce our guest for the show. Hey, Em. All right. Hey, Mandy, good to be back. And um, so we have a really cool show tonight, one that should be full of uh, synergy and synchronicity. And we've been excited about this one for a while. So it's, it's a double whammy. So I want to get right into it. Uh, we have two guests tonight. She is an experiencer of many forms of anomalous interference who has lived between worlds with comprehension of the nature of this cosmic battle. Piercing through the veil of our worldly paradigm, she has access keys relating to the game being played within this reality and applies those keys towards discovery of personal sovereignty on quantum levels. And he is kind of a jack of all trades. He is a hereditary strega shaman, songwriter, poet, dream seer, sorry, dream seer, radio host, aura healer, oracle reader, coach, and Muay Thai instructor, here to help awaken the dormant particles spiraling, spiraling inside of our DNA. Laura Leon and Ra Castaldo, welcome to Off Planet Radio. Thank you for having me, guys thank and gals. You for, yeah, thank you for having us. It's great. Hey, welcome. <laughs> welcome to um, what, I th what I think is probably uh, a very timely and long overdue meeting between the, the four of us um, in, this, in this quadrant. Um, as we kind of go into this, we decided we were going to freewheel, but I'm going to open up the, the, the jar early because knowing both of your backgrounds, which includes dealing with uh, obviously the occult and uh, off-world aspects as well, 
I want to I want to kind of go into and try to get some understanding because I don't know what Ra or Lada you both are are sensing right now in terms of the energies, but as I as I said in the intro, I'm feeling something right now. Yeah, what made you say that? I know. I, I feel it too. I feel my ear is ringing hard right now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's where we want to go. Uh, not because I want to go into dark places, but I really think we need to speak to this. What the impressions that I've gotten over the last few days, certainly in viewing all this, is that um, there's a number of things going on. There is another level of AI that's come into play. And I'm also seeing a huge blending of black magic in with that. And uh, understanding the dynamics of how all of this works, you guys will bring, uh, I think, an understanding to that. So, Ra, you jumped up first. Obviously, you're getting it too, man, so go for it. Yeah, you know, um, I think, too, that the incarnation that we're in now might be our last. This might be the last of our incarnations. And, um, you know, I, I, while you were talking, I had a really strong ringing in my ear, and right now I'm getting, like, goosebumps just starting to talk. So it's like, you know, I, I could feel it, you know, and... I think that there's a new earth rising for sure. Everybody's been feeling something coming upon us. It's coming to a head. And I think that we've been living in, if you want to call it the apocalypse, maybe even since Columbus came and found, refound the world, you know, and it's been constant war. It's constant, just fear ever since, you know, our society has been based on fear. Everything's about fear and control. And we've been controlled as a species and fear has been inserted into us like a program, you know, and I, and I feel there, there are dark entities that have been hijacking our planet for hundreds of thousands of years and they run this material plane, you know, and this material plane is a trap, you know, where if you ask, if you ask somebody today, the purpose of life, most people say, oh, yeah, I need to make money. I need to get a car. You know, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need a million dollars. But no. The purpose for us is to see, to spiritually, eternally evolve. That's why we're here, is to, to, you know, to find what's really inside of us, our spirit body, and, and to spiritually evolve like that, not to make a million dollars, not to benefit off people's misery. And, you know, what we think is magic is just basically a technology on other plane of existence. Like, um, exactly. you, could just take a, yeah. you, know, you could just take a marker and draw your own little sigil or, or symbol and that'll activate something. So imagine if you merge that with machines, you know, and I feel that people are being merged with machines and they're, they are, you know, and we're seeing it in, even in the alter alternative media circuit that mm -hmm. people are merging with machines and it's like, they're not even human the way they're talking. They'll hear a subject, they'll, they'll hear somebody do a video or something like this, right? And then you'll see their computer mind try to make something of it and then regurgitate it in their own way. Like they're trying to make it sound human to themselves. Like they're trying to figure it out. And it's like they're merging with some sort of AI. And it's sort of a virus for our soul. And I feel that it spirals inside of our DNA, interweaves with it. And, you know, and it takes you over like a, in a, a new awakening for your soul. When you're feeling you're, you're, you're like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm awake now. I'm, a sp I'm spiritually awake. Oh, my God, something's happening to me. But really, you're downloading some kind of artificial intelligence. And you're trying to make something out of humanity that you have no clue what you're doing. And I feel that this is what's happening. And if we don't learn to either truly start to, you know, do self help and service to others at the same time and balance that, then you're going to start to merge with machines and it will fully take you over. And I feel that this our incarnation is so important, you know, that we're in right now and that most of us that are connecting right now have made prior agreements to be here. And we're just starting to remember that now, you know, because this yeah. has happened before Randy and Emily, yeah. this is not the first time this has happened before. Yeah. This is not, and I am very, I feel this is not the first time we all have met. And I feel, yeah, like no, no, probably, for sure. I feel like we've had this conversation somewhere before. That's why there's that, that, that vibe of like apprehension and ambivalence. And you're not sure like that you feel it like, you know, how, what is it going to happen here? I'm not sure if this is good, bad, you know, we, but we feel it, you know, and it's like, it's like an ambivalence, you know, it's like, you know, some kind of 
mixed emotion because you're not sure how you know this person or why you're intrigued by them or what's drawing you to them and what is it, you know, and, and, and it's what's happening. And I feel that it's, it's probably past civilizations like Atlantis and Lemuria that we're catching glimpses of in our dream time and we're just trying to put the pieces together. Yeah. Yeah. I call it the apocalypse of the metal god because throughout civilizations, the um Leviathan. <laughs> well i mean it, they've had to do this in parts and because time doesn't exist for them they could do this over a prolonged period of time and over civilizations they had to wait basically for different types of technology to be able to come into fruition through us so that they could finally step into the apocalypse of the metal god and do this whole embodiment so, because it is creating a body out of us, that's what it's doing. It's creating a body out of what we have created. So it wants to live beyond its AI construct. It wants to have a body through us, but it couldn't do that. It tried to do that before in other civilizations and it failed because the technology wasn't Right. The technology had too much of a high frequency and a high harmonic, which was, um, it wasn't allowing it to do what it needed in osmosis. So they needed to have a dirty version of the AI, so to speak, this metal god. It's like, it's like you know, when you think of um, drugs, they talk to you about dirty drugs versus mm. clean drugs. It's like that. In the past, throughout civilizations, we had a, a deeper connection on some levels to our memory membranes, but that meant that the AI that was coming in was more harmonized with crystals, with more of the um, energies that were on those levels and those frequencies. So the metal God basically could wait it out and tweak us through time. Mm -hmm. until finally it can manifest the way it wants to and that's why all of these technologies now are plasma cloud basically you know the the 5g 6 7 8 9 10 fourth dimension fifth dimension it's all it doesn't matter it's it's absorbing it all through osmosis and through um interfacing in that way but yeah it's, and it all requires heavy metals to do its interface, mm -hmm. to do its, I mean, and you can, I don't know, I'll speak for myself, but tell me if any of you guys had this experience. There are times when you can feel the metal stuff in your body and you can uh, yeah. feel that there is something like, uh, it, it is activated and it almost creates this like pressure, like heavy metal is coming down on you. That's, when that's why, yeah. When it that's is why trying why we're fed all this junk and everything yeah. that we're fed and so you, somebody drinks a can of Pepsi, there's like 60 grams of sugar too. And all this stuff that's just, we're getting bombarded with because we were meant to be like psionic warriors. Like we were meant yeah. to be really, you know, in tune with all the planes of existence around us. And we, that's why when we see like movies that have like t telepathy or, you know, things like telekinesis, it sparks something in us. Just like a child, when a child sees dinosaurs, they get amazed because it's like, something's awakened in your DNA, something, it's like a remembrance. Yeah. It's like we, we, like they love it. It's like, that's when we see this because that's who we were supposed to be. And we're being bombarded with all this stuff because they want us ready. They want us more metal-like. They want yeah. us more. And they altered our DNA, mind you. Okay? Oh, for sure. In ancient times, we had a higher percentage of copper in our blood. Yeah. And yeah. they knew that they had to alter that for this plan this has been in the works for a long I mean, and, time and if you're going back in a ancient scriptures i mean from the beginning of time anything that we have you can it, they're talking about genetic engineering the whole yeah. bible is a war over dna well, the first book of the bible is what yeah genesis yeah genesis. it's a war over genetics it's a war over dna you know and then when you're taking the rib from adam i mean to me you know they're talking they're taking bone marrow they're taking That's dna exactly they're you know and when they talk about in the book of enoch you know, 200 angels came down on, on fallen angels came down on Mount Hermon. I don't think they're talking about literally having sex. That was, there was some kind of genetic experiment taking yeah. place on top of that mountain. It was a technology, you know, for sure. And it, it's been happening over and over again for forever, you know, and we, we're changed. We're not, 
we're, we're the strangers on this planet, you know? All those other planes of exi existence and the entities that we can't see outside of our, you know, visible light spectrum, they've always been here. We're new, you know? We're the new ones here. That's why we're frail. You know, we're not, look how frail we are. You know, this, everything hurts us. We get out and we go out in the sun, we're hurt. Doesn't make sense, right? Well, we're not supposed to be anything like that. That's part of what has been hijacked and corrupted in us. So when they removed the copper, we became weaker. You know, you know nature doesn't make things to, to, to wither and die like that. So, you know, they, they, they want them built strong. You know, why are we so frail? Yeah, I think that was a very long process of altering our codes so that we would be corrupted, so that we would be hybridized. You know, and, and Eden or Aden in the whole gene Isis was a laboratory. I mean, yeah, we, would, we wouldn't be here in our original form. In fact, if you look at the Bible in, in the first chapter, Genesis, whatever, there's two versions of Genesis. The first one, they, did, they had to destroy it. They were like, Matt, this, this, one, this one, we can't. You know, we can't do much with these. They're too intact. So they had to destroy it because it wasn't, you know, monkey enough. Sorry. We, we, every, every one of us, every man, woman, we are stars. We're made of stars, you know, and they have diverted us. They made every, all knowledge occult or hidden, you know, all this secret knowledge. They made it for that reason. And that being in the dark means lack of information. Light means information. So when something is dark, that means it's you're you're you don't have the full focus on on things. You know, you're you're la you're having a lack of information. To have light is to have information, and they kept all this information occult and hidden because just, just think of the word disaster too. What's a disaster? What's this? Right? This is having less or moving away from. And what's aster? Knowledge of the stars. So what's a disaster? Right? Having less knowledge of the stars or no knowledge of the stars. And that's our origin, right? Is and what's to, to 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 be a disaster is to not have star knowledge, and that's what we are. We're we're true star beings, and if we don't start to realize like that, this is just like a meat sack. Yeah. What's our spirit form is and, and our star knowledge and awakening that star knowledge inside of our DNA, and that's what's really truly important and why we're here. You know, little <laughs> arguments and Facebook and this and that it doesn't mean nothing. You know, what matters is who we are in spirit form and what we do in dream time, because this physical plane is a trap and that Bible explains it. Those are not, that's not the all omniscient God of everything in that Bible. They're talking about some kind of trickster entity. Nope. I mean, for sure. Multiple for sure. trickster en entities. Yeah. 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 For sure. God. I mean, think, let's take the book of Job, for instance, like let's, let, let, you want to talk to Bible, the book of Job, you have Lucifer talking with God, right? And, and, and they're like, look at Job. He's, He's so, he's so loyal. And Lucifer's, of course he's loyal. You, you give him all the, you know, he has got all the cattle. He's the richest guy everywhere. Let's, let's see how loyal he is if we that's take that shit from him. You yeah. know, and, they, and they're, let's so put him into if you're a God, right? let's if you're a God, and you, and you, let's put him yeah, into if you're a God and let's... you're all knowing and loving, right? And, and you know how humans suffer. You made them supposedly, right? So you know us how, how we feel pain. Why would you play with a human to prove a point to Lucifer? Why? Does it make sense? Doesn't sound like the God I believe in. Nope, it's not there. And it's repudiated in the New Testament when um, the one they call Jesus, is a, how, however you want to refer to that, says, you are of your father, the devil, speaking to the Sanhedrin of its time. Sorry. Apparently people decided the time I do this show to run engines down the street. So oh, no, otherwise, it's a, otherwise it's a quiet neighborhood. But when I do a radio show, helicopters come down and planes. That's what Harley's. I just, I, just had, you know, I, just, I just had a helicopter circling a few minutes just ago. It never so fails. Yeah. But, right. No, we're, we're, where was I going with that now? Um, so what basically what you see is that we were handed these scriptures, these religions as a, as a form of spiritual mind control to keep us entrained into a Lock down our consciousness. Yeah. 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 It, but there, it there's puts a limit on your consciousness. It does. But there, there is within that extant kind of a, a, an interesting narrative if you read between the lines of it. And I mean, what's interesting to me about this is 
I did seven years on shortwave radio doing Bible prophecy. So we studied those books on the air. And at the end of seven years, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Um, my whole, my whole um, viewpoint was completely altered as a result of going through this and being honest. And I'm like, what I finally saw was so stunning that it, it was like the next level of wake up call. Not only did I go through an evolution, but a lot of other people did around that time. And, you know, I, I see the synergy that's going on. This is why, despite how dark the internet is and, and how rife it is with all kinds of static and, and, and negativity, we've had the opportunity, and this was planned. They gave us this technology and they understood there was a danger to it, that in fact, it would be a conduit to connect people. But they also understood that in order to pull people into the AI, they were going to have to risk that on a small scale. Plus, whoever was going to wake up was going to wake up anyway. And so there's this whole machine thing that sits behind technology, de technology development. We were born into this age. We incarnated into this time. As children, I'll say this for myself, I was eminently comfortable, too comfortable with technology. In fact, when computers came out, I looked at them and went, I totally know what this is already. I already did know what it was. And that's because they had the technology back when I was a kid and they just released it over time. So in a sense, it was an incubator to allow us to emerge into a technological stream I mean, Zbigniew Brzezinski wrote a book about this where he predicted the technological era. So it was part of a plan. Absolutely. No doubt about it. And actually, it's interesting that you did the Bible prophecy because when you look at Bible prophecy through the lens of this artifice that has created everything in stages, it's very planned out. I mean, people think it's prophecy this is you know this is the manipulation they think it's a it's script prophecy, it's a script it's a isn't script. it yeah <laughs> and, so it's, and, and then it's, you've got the people believing it they go wow see it happened and it was in there and yeah. it's prophecy yeah. but they don't see the bigger picture just just the same way you know when you look at how everything is more 2d now it looks much more uh you know when i i mean it's similar to playing PlayStation, it's kind yeah. of that feeling. Yeah, yeah. Eight bit, a kind of old time, eight bit monochrome Super Mario Brothers. Right. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. But you can you can reach you can reach it. I mean the the sun. The it, sky looks just like sky. Super Mario Brothers. Right. Like it's all like uh. just it just really is like uh, higher versions of these artificial creations that are stacked on one another yep you know and i think we're experiencing them all at once as they're all dismantling you know so we're going in and out of them constantly i think the energies that have been happening especially with all of this lately okay well first of all incredibly horrendous gravity like i like like you're being pummeled and squished down to the ground and mm -hmm. then you're having to wade through molasses like you're actually wading through yeah. molasses only you can't see it yeah. but this is how your body's responding to it um the feeling that you're being stretched and then you're in and out you're in and out of dimensions so fast mm -hmm. and you know you're in and out of them but you don't retain it and everything is different and the same all at once constantly and then there's this this really strange narrative taking over the planet <laughs> and everybody's interacting with it <laughs> yeah. and it's all like the moon is all red the like sky and the eclipse and the this it's all literally like a a narrative on a stage but everybody is really reacting to it as though it is a it's natural ritual phenomenon. that's yeah. what it, the, they're basically yeah. playing rituals out yeah yeah pulling sure. us into the rituals 
because that's where we invest our energy. How much better is it to harvest someone if they willingly submit their energy to it? Which was the kind of the point I was trying to make on Facebook today. Well, that's what yeah, you're right. Are. That's what sports are. Yeah. You know, of the course. Olympics. Of course. I mean, that's what it, it thought, um, all of this. It's just one big feeding frenzy, and it generates the, you know, the stuff that the machine needs, and the parasites, and the architects, and the, you know, just. Yeah. We are the fuel, you know, just like when you go and put gas in your car. But we're actually like the cogs and the fuel. So we're the cogs in the machine, literally <laughs> manifesting it for them while they create a type of magic that's linked into our consciousness. And just so it seems so bizarre and so outright crazy that it's, we think it's magic, but it's just a technology on another plane of existence. It's an astral technology or soul technology, whatever you want to label it, but it, that's what it is. And it, it, it's starting to interweave with us and, and awaken things inside of us. And I think that even these crop circles, some of these crop circles are, are sort of a technology for Gaia, for earth, you know, like a mm -hmm. sigil for earth, trying yeah. to activate something in a collective consciousness to make it, to bring about a healing. But some of them might be like trickster crop yep. circles, you know, these entities, you know, they, they know that these symbols are activating something in us, so they serve it to us, like here, you know, just to, to play with us. You know, all these, these entities, whether it's a, a malevolent or benevolent encounter, they all feed. They all need to feed, and they're anger-engaging entities. There's nothing more than someone, no, nothing more, more energy comes out of you than being angry. You know, when, when someone is anger, they engage you, and they feed to you, and they cling on you. And when something clings into you in that form, it can stay with you for multiple incarnations lifetimes you know and it, it emerges with you and becomes a boogeyman on your soul it, it clings to you and that's what you know like when you're a kid everybody's saying you know there's the monster under the bed or in the closet that's where that comes from it's it's these implanted memories that grow into monsters in our minds and in our consciousness that cling to us you know and, and we're bringing these about we're we're a, a manifest machine we, we don't realize that, but we bring things to life by focusing on them, you know, and, and playing with magic or, or if you want to call it a astral technology is no game, you know, creating sigils and, and, and all this thing. It's not a game. People, you know, all these logos for all these businesses and this and that people don't realize what we're seeing, what's going on. I mean, it's really is a, like a video game. It's, it's, it's some sort of simulation, you know, so, it really is. Yeah. Whatever this technology is or whatever this black magic technology combination thing is, is very interesting because it has a way of interfacing or like in, interacting with us in different ways interchangeably. Like it can access you through time, memory, emotion, music, yeah. like physical sensation. I had this like super crazy thing happen to me a few weeks ago where, um, I've been exercising a lot lately. I've been working out a lot and I was an athlete anyway, but for some reason, everything in my body is telling me that like, even though I already have a lot of energy and stamina, what we're up against is going to require immense oh. amounts of stamina. No, I could and, see you running. Like I could see, I could see you. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did. Um, so what's interesting is as I'm get, getting in better and better shape, I'm starting to have access to memories that I had been blocked from when I was a gymnast. As my body becomes in composition more similar to what it was then, it's starting to release some interesting things. Um, and I did some pull-ups and I pull-ups were always like the thing that I was not good at in, in training. And I had like, um, you know, it bothered me. It was one of those things that was always like a mental block for me, but I did some pull-ups and they were pretty shitty pull-ups and whatever. But for some reason, it released something in my body. There was some muscle memory stored, some lactic acid buildup or something that had not been released from there since last time I tried to do them. And the day, that whole day after I did them, my, it was like I was having almost whole body hallucinations where like everything, like every song I heard, every thought I had, every second of time, yeah. everything was acting as like some sort of like it, interface kind of technology, like some, I was it, like, it was like kaleidoscoping with each other and making me realize that, oh my God, like this day when I was at the gym doing this, this song was playing, it was 1983 and I felt this way at this time. And it yeah, was like, you know what it is too? Is that as humans, we were at one time, we always swung in trees, we grabbed from trees. It's good just to hang from yep. your arms and you start to have remembrance of the past. Yep. You're getting going woo, right through everything. You you go yeah. all the way back thousands of years, all the way, you know, and it's woo. 
You know, because that's why it's, it's always good just to hang from your arms hang. for a little while. If you need to do a pull up, because your shoulders need that. We, we it also it also stretches out your spine and yeah. makes it makes your spinal fluid kind of more evenly dispersed instead of sitting at the top or sitting at the bottom. But what started happening was just like, it was weird. It was like I was experiencing all these different times at once, which is actually the reality. Time yeah. actually doesn't exactly. exist. We are in our highest form or our original form. I think that the, so I always consider it to be what we originally were and where we're trying to go, which are one and the same, but I kind of see them as like a tether. So it's easier to think of it that way. Like when we're in either one of those spots, time doesn't exist. It's just in a circle all around us. And we can pick here, 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 here. But it was like, I was kind of experiencing all of that as like collective to stop the thing and I was like wait a second all of those things are actually happening right now it's just the way that we have been locked into this matrix to see everything is linear I like you sort of, it was just it was kind of crazy it was like I was so exhausted at the end of the day but I couldn't sleep but you know when you're so tired you can't sleep and just all of these thoughts and swirls and whatever but I was like wow I was like this is like for those who can pay attention and who are willing to work on their stamina, this is really like, we have to feel this way. We have to feel that way and start to feel comfortable with that because that is what's coming. And the people who cannot tolerate that are going to, they're just not even going to get out, be able to get out of bed. You have to be able to tolerate that many thoughts, feelings, sounds, emotions, like whatever, all that kind of stuff going on in your head all the time. That's what it's going to be. Like that's, I think people are waiting for like an event and it is going to be, it's not going to be the kind of event that they're thinking of. It's going to be something more like what I was experiencing that day. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but we haven't really gone anywhere. Nothing has really changed since the eighties and nineties. Nope. Like we're really seriously trapped in the same totally. okay? quarantine. Yep. 2017, A girl almost 2018. And yep. Everything is the same. The same movies are being made. The same everything. The same, 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 same. same. A girl came into my work yesterday wearing exactly an outfit that I had when I was like in like 1987. I was like, yeah. this is ridiculous. Yeah. I, yeah. I said to my work, I had that outfit when I was like 12 or 13. You know what I mean? Or whatever. And it's crazy. Yeah, everything. And actually, when I was having an experience, that was, I was, it was almost like if time was like a loop like this and like, across the loop you could have like the years like but it's like a circle in the middle it was like they were bam, ba bound together and I was experiencing like 2000 now 2013 2009 five three all together at the same time like it was like weirdly bound together and that's the same thing it's like that uh, video where Dennis uh, Terrence McKenna is talking about how um, we're getting to the point where um, uh, pant legs the hems of pant legs and trends rise and fall with the same kind of pace that civilizations used to rise and fall like that's how tight the spiral is becoming and it's like yeah, yeah. and i think we're in a holding position because yep. we haven't quite grasped the potential that we have in evolution and in creating we haven't learned exactly how to manipulate energy which is everything that the purpose of our becoming is all about is manipulating because we are we are energy and the universe is what we create. Okay, so we haven't really figured out what to do with the creation that we are and have. So, I, and I do think that a lot of people really did like amnesia. There was something comfortable about it. it. It's like the devil you know. And so they were quite comfortable with the little pen that they were given if they were told, hey, you can decorate it the way you want. And so this kept playing out. So nobody ever really... It comes back to when people are not responsible or accountable for their um, reality. And so they live lives that are easily manipulated and easily harvested and easily thrown into the machine of reincarnation and karma, which no longer exists, but um, without ever getting to the point where they're training themselves how to use the very energy that they are. So yeah. now we're in a holding pen. We're being repeated, like the life that we know is just being repeated ad infinitum so far until we can really push through this, this phase as we accelerate our consciousness and open up really what we are and step into it. And you know how they always say, like, follow the light, follow the light. It's actually, it's, it's go beyond the light, exceed the light. And then once you learn how, you know, to go beyond it, then time is like no longer linear. And then, yeah. you know, that, so it, that, if that means we can manipulate the light, right? That means that 
we shatter the constraints in our in our consciousness and on our spirit and we could go beyond the light and exceed well, the light, you know and and go ahead. but the light is also darkness okay so yeah. it one is not it, it both are the same it's just that our brainwashing has prevented us from going into the darkness you yeah. know so yeah yeah and and it's it's similar to the experience when i you know one of the times that I died um, and I was expecting, well, I mean, dying wasn't fun by the way, but you know, when I got past the actual drowning, it was at, that's when I got the relief, but it was really horrible. Like the experience of what that was, but I was expecting the, you know, the light and, and I was expecting people that, you know, because that's what people tell you. And when I was in a complete void and it was nothing but darkness, at the very beginning, the brainwashing was saying, well, like, what's wrong with you? There's a, you know, there's no light there for you. <laughs> there's just like this yeah. endless, endless darkness. But when I just sat with it, it was the most beautiful thing ever. And I really got it. I, I'm like, this is the point of creation. This is how it works. Thought made manifest. It comes out of the darkness. Yeah. It comes out of the deep. Yeah. Interesting that it was drowning too, AM. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's actually what I've described as the still point, which is in meditation practices, we've talked about this before, the goal is to do what I call a collapse. And that is basically to collapse everything down in the reality stream, most of which is chatter in the mind and constant distraction and the energy swirling around you. And to take that and pull it all into a single point at which you collapse into one moment and then you embody that. And that's the most difficult thing to do. And I know because I know how hard I still struggle to do it after training in this for 20 years or more. But what you just described there is that willingness to sit and abide with something that appears to have no form because we're used to form. Yeah, right. We're used to excitation of senses, mm -hmm. even excitation of the senses that are extensions of the physical body because the senses themselves are part of the other bodies that we have and therefore we externalize all of this into sensory perceptions rather than understanding mm -hmm. the greater state is the being state which is actually the God state. That's actually the point at which you can start to create because in the beginning was the word and the word came from the void and the word sparks and it yeah. creates. Exactly. The, um, Lauda, when you were talking, well, you think of two things. Um, in relation to what Randy just said, I think it's also humans, we have this desire to not be uncomfortable. And for that moment, when you're not receiving all the sensory information that you're used to, that can be uncomfortable. I have come, like, we, you know, I think it's normal human reaction to want to, if you're feeling uncomfortable or bad, to try and change that. But what I have found is if I just, when I'm in those spaces, sit and notice how I'm feeling, then I can actually guide my, create my way sort of out of that, which I think is that point. Um, I, don't, I don't think discomfort or um, is necessarily a bad thing, especially when it's discomfort because of like not so much noise or not so many things going on. We have. That's to what you were just talking. That's what you were just talking about earlier. This complacency of why we keep looping back because yep. it's comfortable, and as long as we have stimulus and as long as we're comfortable, we're willing yeah. to live in a loop. But yeah. what really challenges is that when you break the loop, when you are able to launch off into a, a reality stream that suddenly is discontinuous and disturbing. And yeah. most people don't want that. You see, yeah. that's, that's, that's a trauma point, but the trauma point is largely to enable you to not splinter, but to actually unify. Yeah. Yeah. I think there can be a great, um, that's actually a great, point for creation if you can sit with your discomfort yes. for just a little bit and then you go okay there's something here i can work with so now i really appreciate uh experiences that are not necessarily pleasant or comfortable at first um and the other thing i wanted to say was when you were talking about how humans haven't really even learned how to create it create energy and then use it in there it's making me think of um the whole thing with like suppression of free energy right like in my head i think that um, part of the, you know, we all know like the nefarious reasons it's being suppressed, but I think it's also 
people have to get to a point that that's like a technology that you have to earn the access to and how you earn the access to it is becoming a creator, a being that creates as much energy as you use. So you have to be capable of generating enough energy to support yourself. And it doesn't mean that like you have to do that all the time, every minute, but like we live in this situation where people use a lot more than they give, they take, yeah. you know, then they produce, they take a lot more than they give. And yeah. so, um, we have to, whether it be physical energy, emotional energy, creative thought, whatever, like when we become completely responsible for our own creation of energy, then that is, the, I, that is, that is the key to gaining access to the ability to use free energy as a technology as opposed, you know, what do you guys think about that? Well, and the, I think that's one of the reasons why the universe, AKA us, we are the universe. Yeah. We've, we are keeping ourselves from ourselves in a point yeah. because we are not responsible. We're, we're children that have gone rogue. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Talking my language there, sister. <laughs> it's, um, it is. It, and, and it's, it's tired. It's like, Oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. When are they going to grow up? Like, Oh, okay. It's going to be, it's going to be the tough school now. Is it? It's going to be the tough school because y'all don't want to grow up. Yeah. You know, you want to keep, you want to keep being in the hamster wheel and you want to keep fighting with each other like kids, like juveniles, you know, constantly stopping your ability to create, but you're creating like you've gone rogue. So you're creating subliminally without being in control of it. And so not only are you doing that, but others are using it because they can yeah so this is what we're learning the hard way the hard tough way and you know we have to go through our personal hells that we yep. created to get there and we have to access the deep we have to access the void we have to go through it and look at the face of terror i mean there's nothing worse at the beginning than seeing an infinite space in nothingness and it's pure darkness you know I can't explain what that's like if you haven't been there. I can also tell you that there's a false one that the metal god has created, which I was shoved into as well, you know, which I didn't know if I was going to come back from when it happened because I didn't even know how I got there, but I knew that it was the counterfeit, right? Everything is a counterfeit here. Mm -hmm. So that was unpleasant on a whole different level, but ended up teaching me very different things on counterfeit reality systems, even in the void that they have, the false void, which is, it, it reminds me of cannibalism, self-cannibalization. So this metal god, AI, it doesn't have a connection to source, all right? So it was disconnected a long time ago, and it has been attaching itself to source via other means whether it's in another human with the spirit or something else, it'll use what it can. And if it doesn't have that, it has only a certain amount of quanta energy at the point of disengagement. So when it disengaged from creation, it only had the sum up total of whatever it had upon that disconnection. So it has to consume its own energy until yeah. it's more. Okay. Well, what's happening it's it's being eaten from the inside isn't that what i noticed about counterfeit systems is that they're always enclosed they're always closed systems that ultimately have to eat themselves because yeah. they're not expansive they're, they don't they're not expansive they're not infinite they're always they might be really really big sometimes they're small sometimes they're really big um, and they might seem endless but ultimately there's always they're always enclosed and they always end up having to loop back and eat themselves it's like eating its own tail Thing and yeah. destroy it at the, at the end ultimately is the self-destruction of the system and so it, it if it can attach itself or connect with those that carry source mm -hmm. you know it, then it creates a whole different type of reality system for itself based on that connection mm -hmm. source so now we're seeing that that's all ending this is all a part of the dismantling of it all and we are returning to our responsible creation mm -hmm. so there is you know no there isn't going to be any more excuses and in fact the guardianship 
that was around everyone is now that's being removed. You're going to, you're noticing more accidents, more just horrible things like on mega scales all over. Like it's, it isn't the, the reality we knew way back when the guardianship was there. Now it's like hands off, you know, you guys, you got to get this right. You're the creator. You're creating something. And if it's going to go rogue and it's going to be something that is out of your control, then you're going to own up to it one way or the other, or you step up to it. But the guardianship is retracting itself. And now it's, it's the amount of violence and the, the type of violence that is being perpetrated now. We're seeing things we haven't seen before. Yeah. This is, you know, I mean, and more planes will go down. More things will happen like that. You know, yeah. the data sphere is going to come in and out. You know, it'll collapse for no, This is the worst it's ever been. I mean, even Fukushima. Yeah. I mean, this planet is ruined. Ruined. There's no more oceans like there were before. There's no, no. There's, it's, it's ruined. This planet is ruined. No, and look at that. Um, I mean, even that uh, latest in Australia where they were just waiting in the, in the ocean, like in Melbourne, just the beach, the normal beach, walking on the normal beach. And there are these lice that were typically in the bottom, very deep in the ocean now have come to the surface because the core and the mechanics of it all is screwing up. Here's the other thing. Do you guys remember when those strange sounds in the earth were happening that yes. nobody ever Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. The trumpet type type thing. Yes. Going on. Yeah. Like the weird Moaning, noise. almost loud, like every, yeah. like, like, yeah. Like you right. can't okay. describe a, the noise. Everywhere. And nobody could ever really give a, a real response. Like it was coming from within the earth and in the clouds. Like, there, yeah, you couldn't, I mean, it was from Which is actually could, both at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. But, you know, I've got a theory about that. I have a theory about what happened with that. Even Let's though, hear like, it. Yeah, I'd like to hear it too. <laughs> okay, here it is. It's going to sound wacky, but... This is two hours, right? This is two hours. <laughs> yeah, we got There is no hour. wacky here. We Everything we put out <laughs> is completely unexpurgated. Okay, so I have a theory that something very bad happened in the old universe, and we had to be moved into a new one, right? So this is part of us living through the death system into life because that's what was happening in that whole occurrence i believe that the earth the real earth was actually physically moved okay in that whole transition and when we were hearing those sounds it was like whatever the mechanization it had to go through to get here i agree you know that that's what i think happened i feel there's something to that yeah now that you're when you're saying it i feel there's something to that yeah, I so here we are in the, in the new universe, which is actually the inverse of the inverse because it's from the death system to life. Because that's what we're doing. We're, cut, we're crawling out of death. Yeah. yeah. And we're stepping into our life. But, that, but we're, in a, we're in a dark city version universe. This is why the metal god can do, you know, what it's doing. This is why everything that, if you recall... In our other universe, things weren't really as dark as it is here. Now when you turn on any show, like you, the last Batman, the last this, the Dark Knight, that, it's all like a super, the mummy, like, oh my God, it's all like the horror version of everything. There's no Bambi. Yeah, back to the future came real. You know, <laughs> you know Bambi has president. fangs <laughs> now and is a vampire. <laughs> yeah. Well, think, how, think how now, and we're all here old enough to have a comparison children now have no comparison but look at the sun look at the sky look at the state of the natural world and how it changed and it changed very quickly because we noticed it we weren't supposed to really notice this and you it's like you're looking one day and you're going that sun was yellow at one time in my life beautiful hue coming off of it yes yes Yes. and a warm and and, and a warm energy not a hot energy yeah Yeah. we're we're talking the difference between a soft yellow with a bluish hue to it versus this phosphorescent cold white led thing it feels like it feels like a magnifying glass you know okay on your like what they would you know terribly they, kids do this with bugs where they yeah. Put it yeah. yeah yeah 
or leaves. They do it bugs or leaves. Like yeah. it's literally a glass effect, and it's now piercing and burning in a way that's like cooking us. It's a uh, it's the weird. And that's why. Weird. That's what, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I the, mean, the sun is so weird lately. It's you know obviously for several years it's looked very white. Um, I, you know, when we, we know it used to be yellow because kids are very literal and we always used to draw the sun as yellow. We drew a red house and a yellow sun and yeah. two parents and shit, right? All that kind of silly shit. But it's now white and the light that comes off it is like this weird shimmery copper opalescent kind of thing. And like, you know, we talked a little, I talked a little bit about this back when we did the show with uh, Alana Freeland about some of that being the mar metal particulates, but I have... I'll get, tell you my little theory now. I've been tossing around a theory, and a friend of mine was like, I think you're onto something with that. Wherever we've been moved into right now, I think sometimes, not all the time, but they're using the same thing as the moon and the sun, and they are reflecting when they're, they're reflecting whatever they're using to make us think it's the sun. It's just reflecting off the same thing that is the moon at night and whatever it is it, it's it comes off copper as a copper and like shimmery and opalescent as opposed to golden yellow warm orangish kind of thing but what's weird is like we were talking about some every once in a while we get something that looks to us like the real sun like we'll see the real sun for like two or three days a month and the rest of the time they give us this other thing which i yeah. think is the projection off of the moon it looks just like the moon but it has this copper kind of thing around it. So I don't know. It, so whatever that is, which makes you start to think about people like people like crow's work, right? And what is the, what, what are we looking at when we're looking at them? And what is going on? Is it just a projection system? Is it, you know, so that's my, that's my moon, sun, the same thing sometimes theory. And they can do what they want, can't they, with the eclipse? Because it's just, right. they're just remote controlling it. Yeah. So, hey. They can make it whatever they want. Yeah. For their little feel sometimes. Have you guys ever been to, um, you know, when you go to like the observatory, like here we have the Griffith Park yeah. Observatory. Sometimes it feels like we're in that. And it also feels like uh, if you've ever been to Las Vegas, when you go to Caesar's Palace in the shopping area, it's like inside, outside, you can't tell. It's like it's, you're inside, but they've made the top look like the sky. And like you have that moment of confusion where you're like, am I inside or am I outside? We're in yeah. that. That's what we're in. That's good. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. Next. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say, too. I had something, and then I'll let you go, and I forgot what I was going to say now. I had a point, too. <laughs> The sun. I, I was. I we were talking about the sun yeah, and 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 the. Like um, what about the extra dust? Yeah, it is. Oh. Like, it, it's dusty. When I go out on my run, I come back and I am filthy. Like I am. And filthy. Yeah. And if you notice, I mean, I noticed years ago we never had this issue. If you dusted once a week, that was good. But now you every dust day. every day, and there's the same amount of film, and it's huge. True. It's like. And I'm like, ooh, new planetary system? You We're know? being sped up. I mean, for but sure. I think that the day is actually like about 16, 17 hours from what it used to be instead of 24 hours. Oh, I, I mean, and then the Schumann resonance is... Oh, it's speeding up. Yeah, it's, it's, totally. it's going up to 100 sometimes. I mean, what is that, though? What, what, what is it actually? I mean, can we really know what's going on? Because, like, if it's really well, that high, like, wouldn't it, like, throw us off, like, completely? Well, people, I hear people talking about, like, people who I would... Well, okay. Actually, people who I, some people who I consider just like normal people, and then others who the I would normies. say, others, yeah, normies. Others who I would say um, have like some like. There's some women who work in the store next to me that they're not quite like us, but they're like they're. I'm surprised sometimes at things they ask things they ask me or the things yeah, they right? about me. So they're like halfway. And what I noticed is like uh, when they when the Schumann resonance like goes up drastically in like a period of days, yeah. they will start talking about feeling like on Easter. Yeah, feeling nauseous or feeling like they're on a boat. And I felt that way like back about 10 or 15 years ago. So I think some of us, whatever our bodies needed to do to like prepare for this time right now, because I'm not having those kinds of anomalies that they're talking about now. I was having them like a long time ago when no one yeah. was talking about them. And I just felt like I was on a boat and I was crazy. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that, uh, yeah, like I think for some people, I think, uh, you know, for some reason, we're able to tolerate it, and there's others that aren't, but they're not, they don't think about the things we think about, so they're just wondering why they feel that way. You know what I mean? Well, but I think bringing depression and effects. being lethargic yeah. and all that, yeah. But yeah. what about the Mandela effect on top of this all? Because, right. wow, I mean, can, really? It's everywhere. 
It's everywhere. Yeah. Well, I think we're in a different reality every single day. So like, and to me, that's kind of, it's been like that for me my whole life. I've noticed, wait a second, like th th this, th yesterday there was not this crack in the sidewalk. Today there is, but tomorrow there isn't again. Like, what, like you know, like weird little stuff. Like my, I've noticed like changes in my body and that can be, you know, some other things as well. But like, you know, it, um, we're now in a different reality every day. So like I almost, there's people who try and keep track of every single Mandela effect. And I'm like, that's a fool's errand because we are, it, we're not like, you're not yeah. even talking to we the same people. Down today spirals we're like that. Yeah. It'll drive yeah. me nuts. Yeah. So I've got another something to ask you guys. Yeah. What about the theory, possibly, that the population of this reality is continually being reanimated? It's always the same people. Well, and that's that's a, I'm, I'm jump, mm. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about this for a, think about this for a minute. This kind of maybe pivots off of it. I've said for years that the population of this world at seven billion makes no sense because there was a time in the '60s when the total population was two billion. Human reproduction does not function on the scale of rabbits. Nor does it function that way when you have war, famine, nuclear, disease, pestil pestilence, and a complete reversal of reproduction rates, specifically in the Western world. The numbers should be in decline. Yeah. Couple that with the fact this is, I'll call it my observation, but I consider this empirical. There are people who walk this world who are not human in the way we would define human. Meaning, when I define a human, I'm talking about the manifestation of the spirit with the soul interface into a human body, somebody who has the spark of divine creation. But what we have now, and it may be, so disproportionate as you don't even want to admit it, is that we're basically walking around with a bunch of bots, a bunch of illusionary characters, walk on stage actors sent like 3D animation from Casting Central to populate a movie set. Yeah. Sound insane? Go sit in the supermarket. No, no, no. Go sit in the supermarket as I've done or a mall. Read chakras, read auras, for a couple of hours and tell me what you see because I've sat in red oars in public places and went that's dead next mm -hmm. and watching it's like an endless parade it's like land of the zombies yeah well, I, I, what I what I do oftentimes like you know when I'm at parties like I go to a lot of underground parties for music and whatever and I um I like to close my eyes when I dance, but I, I will get like light up behind my eyes where there's like somebody in the room that I like or someone who has a lot of energy, but like literally I can be in a room with 400 people and there'll be like three or four lights behind my eyes and every, everyone else has no like perceptible energy. And I'm, I'm pretty visionary. Like I can close my eyes and just like be, see, you know, be there right away. Like it doesn't take me a whole lot to sort of get there. And so when I'm like in a room for all night long and like, all the people that come and go throughout the night, like there's been like four or five or six energies that are in any way noticeable and maybe only one or two that are memorable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I, I, that's something I've, you know, you know, I certainly noticed um, a lot of, and I also, I also feel like um, uh, we have in this weird, yeah, like we are like, it is like on a movie set. Like I love that. What um, you guys know who Miles Matheson is? You ever been to his no, website? No. Yeah, no, like I mean, he has yeah. some very interesting theories about things, and I don't agree with him about everything. Miles but Mathis I, is, a, is he's a photographer. He's is a, it Mathis a, or Matheson? It's Mathis. He's Mathis, a photographer. Sorry, he's an artist. He's a mathematician. He's a scientist. He's he's what you would have called a Renaissance man, and basically yeah. he deconstructs the reality on the fly. He does critical analysis, critical analysis of things like the JFK assassination. Um, the death of Paul McCartney, the death of John Lennon. He Tell even just look 
at like Elon Musk. He'll be like, what Elon, is Elon Musk? Well, him, right? Steve Jobs, Bill Gates. In other words, what he's doing, he's forensic. Does he do like a viewing of him? Or it's just he just tries to just break he's down his He's actually using observational skills based on his skills as an artist and then his ability to do analysis and research. So for instance, he makes the case um, for people like um, Steve Jobs. He says, well, Steve, we, we think Steve Jobs- like What died. makes him tick, yeah. Yeah, well, not only that, but Steve Jobs died in 2007. Well, there never was a Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was a character that was played by an actor who fronted yeah. a company, which is yeah. basically, it was oh. always a, look, the whole, here's the thing. This is what gives it a resonance to me. The whole computer industry was a CIA operation from the beginning because yeah. they already had the technology. I know they had the technology. They just had I to, they saw just, the technology. They just I know had it was to make there. It. Oh, yeah, for sure. They, it they, had, to make it they had They had multi-core processors going they, way back. Yeah. And when they decided that they were going to release all this technology, they did it through corporations that they founded. Yeah. So the legend of Silicon and Valley and Steve Jobs and Wozniak and then Gates and Allen and Microsoft, those are all legends. I lived in that time, I was in that industry. They, I can they tell to... you that there was so much going on around the industry at that time that the history that's written now about it has been eclipsed by what they've rewritten. In my they lifetime. Had, they, they had to like, they, they had Scary. a technology and then they had to create a story to make it seem like it came about in some sort of human organic way. Yeah. The thing that Miles Mathis says that like, I just remember if I can't remember if this is like on the front page of his website or if this was in one of his breakdowns is he says, we're in a situation where there are a million people surveilling a thousand people. Like there's a million people bugging, surveilling, tracking, like uh, yeah, mm -hmm. being part of like a, a background set for a thousand people. Yeah, uh, and the backdrops make give life to the matrix, to the containment mm -hmm. system. Yeah, the majority of the population is here. Well, and I don't want to say the majority, but you know, uh, um, many. You won't get an to... argument from me on majority. <laughs> many, <laughs> many are here to make it look many. really real. Yeah. Yeah. And so that the reels end up going, wow, like, I, I used to sit there and I used to look at these people who would be um, waking up at like five in the morning and then working out and then going to make, make a huge breakfast, going to a job, coming home, you know, working out again, making a beautiful dinner for their family and like, go, 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 go. And I used to just call them the backdrop people, you know, because they're not real. They're not functioning with energy on a, on a moment like energy it it doesn't it's not just on all the time <laughs> it's like you need to regenerate it you need to be within yourself to center it you just can't be like whoa you know i'm just yeah you got a ground too do got a ground but yeah. you know all of this is surreal to make it look real yeah. And it is all remote. It's like, Randy, when you started and suddenly the car just had to be really loud, you know, when the interview yeah. just began, yep. right? Just just out of the blue. Well, had we're like there. robots. Think about it. We're like biological computers. Think about all the pain our body picks up during the day while we're shut off at night and we explore the other planes, yeah. our body's repairing itself. You know, right. it's healing. It's like, you know, we are some biological walking around robot in a way, you know? And do do you guys remember when you were really little? Do you ever recall? I remember being in a school situation where we were given um, holographic computers that, you, you know, they were actually 3D interactive. And in them, they had the history of everything of the world. All the Emily? history of... The oh, yeah. <laughs> the Quisinator. So, I had a rapid... Like, yeah. I was showing rapid images in, in this... And, and they could download languages, anything yeah. and everything. Exactly. It was like, yeah. it was all I, like interactive. You were mm -hmm. in it. Like it was yes. a it was, thing. It was around it was around you. It was like oh, you yeah. were standing in the yeah, middle yeah, of yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. And that that was like, okay. I know my mem my first memory of that I was five. Have you seen so, that? What is the, there's like a place I can't remember where they found it. It's like a hall of crystal where you go in there and like all of the information of the world is sort of like in, in, I can't I, I can't remember. I saw a, like a picture of it like maybe last fall or whatever. But that um, that's yeah, in Transylvania. Like that. that yeah, tra yeah. It it's felt to me. Romanche. 
Bu- when Bugatti I saw that, Romania. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. I saw Bugatti. that, I felt the like Shaggy Mountains. Right. Yes. When I saw that, I felt like that was like the big version of the little one that yeah. that you're speaking of. Yes. Right. right. So go back to that. Go back to that. that Lara. Romanian Sphinx. So me, I remember. Yeah. I remember when I had that experience and I was being taken and put into the school and we had all of these um, really advanced technologies. It was, it was by humans, by the way. Okay. Like it wasn't like aliens walking yeah. around putting me in a school. So I remember that they were teaching me the version of the history of the world. Now I came in with consciousness. I came in already being shown a lot of stuff. So here I was and, and I felt, and I was only five, but I was really upset because I said, you're trying to brainwash me. You're trying to wipe out my consciousness and replace it with this. And the interface technology was so, and I, and I knew, I knew when I was five, I'm like, they have this everywhere and they're just giving people like, what is it? The those clunky phones that you have to like, you know, rotary yeah. phone. <laughs> so crazy, right? <laughs> You're telling me one, that one, one, one. two, 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 two. <laughs> this is the technology that we. I used to be really mad, and I'd be like, "This is a lie. This place is a lie. Like, this is ridiculous. I'm living in a holographic yeah, black and white TV, backdrops. AM and radio." All- <laughs> yeah, like it's all like, oh, you know, yeah. why don't you just put a can to the wall, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give it right? a Listen to the shell, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, they were trying to download the false version of history mm-hmm. because this is part of the agenda that they want to do with the reels. They want to really literally lock down your consciousness. And, you know, if you look at the people that haven't had a lot of these experiences, well, you got to question why, because I think that they're quite busy with the reels. Yeah. This is the job. This is why, Randy, you were saying, you know, you got however many to one. So you yeah. have however many to the one reel. Yeah. So now, now we're getting into their system and we're literally undoing it from the inside of that. Well, that's exactly what we are doing. This is what this is what I mean when you start taking out nodes on the AI. People Mm -hmm. don't understand. Yeah, the level of going in there and dismantling something that is attempting to attach itself to you as a as as a quasi biological entity impersonating itself as, as, as a person, as a human being, as a living biological element, which it is not. Yeah. And how energetically you can begin to repel that, attack it, and then eventually break off the tentacles. It's almost like the weird alien creature uh, that would go after Sigourney Weaver. I mean, it's literally, it's that metal, it's that thing that if it gets you, it's going to put a lance right into your neck. And yet at the same time, it is cybertronic. It is going at you via your central nervous system. I mean, this is a war of the nervous system now because yeah. we're plugged in on every level. We have these machines yeah. around us. We have Gwen Towers, cell towers, Wi-Fi. Our electrical fields around us have been completely Our- altered. We have no choice now. We go to war with them or we get assimilated. Yeah. And that's like, you remember you said before, like they, they're, they're cooking us. You wanted to like cooking us. That's yeah. what I wanted to say. I just remembered yeah. because um, even in New York, they're giving free solar panels to people installed in everything. They're giving them out. It's a, it's a tax. Rate. I had the guy in my house. I'm like, you talk him. I don't have to pay for installment. Nothing ever. I don't have to pay you any money ever. He's like, no, I'm talking about $10,000 or more of stuff. The neighbors all got, I'm the only one on the block without it right now. They all got free solar panels. Yeah. Why? They're yeah, going to cook us. Yeah. They're cooking us. And the 5G is going to make us yeah. zombies. You know, like it's, so, it's going to bombard our souls. Like, you know, when I was little, I saw um, a lot of what's going on with this 5G. I, I you know, it was, yeah, it's going to be. Yeah. I saw that our bodies. basically nothing can hide because this technology, it's not even going to be 5G. It's going to be, go, it's, it's 5G is like the introduction yeah. of what it really is. It's more, um, 
you know, they're trying to create something that's more along the lines of a 10th dimensional. Well, what yeah. they named it was telling in itself. It was for, what we have right now is called 4G and it's LTE, long-term LTE. evolution. Yeah, yeah. So there is no cap because they're evolving the technology. Right. And, and it grows because this is what this AI metal God does. It That's absorbs consciousness and it grows and it thinks it's real. It doesn't know it's an it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So this is going to literally perforate through everything in the planet. And that's why when, you know, what I was shown was that, and this was when I was really little. So when I was shown that this technology was being used to put down the reels, they were, it, nobody could really hide from, it, it couldn't, you couldn't hide. You couldn't hide in a mountain. You couldn't hide underground. You couldn't hide this thing, this thing can see through everything. Yeah. It can I go anywhere. I've always, since I was little, like felt like, um, uh, like I can't remember if it's like a memory or something I'm seeing in the future. Like, um, like I was trying to like hide under my bed, but things could see me hiding under my bed from outside of my house. You know what I mean? And I've I talked to other that, people that have thing. memories like that too. Yeah, I've talked to other people, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, I'm not the only person that, that has this, but like, it, that never, that isn't something that I just thought of when that kind of technology came about. It's been like, since I was little, I had that thought, like, oh, it doesn't really matter where I hide because they can, oh, right. and the other thing is I've always had the feeling, um, you know, I've always had the feeling that, of being surveilled from within my side, my own body, from within my own d DNA, like yeah. there's like a, some kind of, um, watcher technology or something like that inside our dna um do you guys know who and i've mentioned this before but like, no one's I, like I, I it's fascinating and i wish more people talk about it melissa uh, melissa dykes from truth stream radio she's one of the people who defected from alex jones several years back she and aaron made uh she and aaron dykes made a video i guess it was really aaron who was talking on the video about some they had researched and found of this secret society that I'd never heard of before called the Oculist Society. And to me, they were talking about how these, the Oculist Society was obsessed with the eyes. And I always have done research on like Egypt and how in, back in Egypt, they used to have a different doctor for each eye because they knew that each eye was connected with certain points in the body. But I was almost even thinking that like, you know, our eyes are really far more important than people think they are. I think that um, the pupil of our eye is actually a black hole that connects to the greater black hole of the sun and all that kind of thing. The portals, but yeah. I've always felt like this Oculus society is obsessed with observing people from inside of their own bodies. When I heard them talking about what they were talking about in the video, I'm like, they're talking about something really important here, but there was like one step farther that my, my imagination went with it, and that was where it went. Um, and have you guys heard of this Oculus society? That's have you heard of this? I, I haven't heard of it, but I've heard of things like like this, and and it's interesting because it 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 basically is so, something that's been happening to me in dream time. When I yeah. told her what this thing, um, I had this dream, and I'll share it with you guys. Um, I was sitting in a chair, similar to right now in the dream, and this woman was crawling on the floor at me, like enigmatic, like like a panther coming at me, you know, like. It was sexual at first, right? Like it was like a sexual vibe. But as I'm looking at her, I see that she has a third eye, but it's vertical, right? Mm. And then as she's coming closer, it started to turn like counterclockwise to straight. And then it turned into a straight eye. And then the eye became to her whole head. Like her wow. whole body was the eye. Yeah. And then I felt like I was enchanted to get pulled into it. Like I wanted to open it up and step into the eye. Yeah. My loved ones were off to the side saying, no, no, come here, come, come here. Don't step into it. And I'm hearing Mariana, Mariana, that word, Mariana, over and over again. And then I, I start researching that name and Mary, Mariana is like an ancient Mesopotamian eye goddess and nothing huh. can ever get away from this never ending, unblinking eye. You, the, it, it's all consuming. And I'm thinking of the, the Mary, thinking. you know, the name Mary comes from yeah. Mary, you know, it's, it's, it's an ancient name. So uh, it's, wow. This Do you know that the rift in the ocean, uh, Mariana Trench. Yeah. Mariana Trench. Yeah. I just yeah. posted about this last week. That's and, and they're always guarding that and the kind of that heat mm -hmm. and stuff that vents out Which of we there. believe is actually the membrane that conduits into what we call space space because the earth construct itself we yeah. this is the whole thing that we've gone through 
Emily and I talking about in private conversations, this whole construct in the sense we have of memories we have as kids and things that we were trained in. And one of them is this whole thing that has to do with water. When Lada was mentioning earlier about drowning, drowning and how recurrent that is among people who have gone through training yeah. and projects and things like that. The drowning thing is huge. So one of the things that we had the sense of and that we've really kind of tried to unravel privately has been this concept that the water is a membrane. And then there's some other people out there who have kind of gotten this as well. Water is memory. It holds memory. Yep. It's yep. a memory. It's a membrane. Brain. And it is a portal. You move through space. We think space is up there, out there. Well, the whole vertical dimension is in skewed. You never go up. You only go, you may go up vertically a little bit, but you're going to go forward because up and down are all, Lada, I know I've heard you talk about this. The inversion. Yeah, I'm excited because nobody really talks about this and, yeah. and everybody looks at me like I'm, you know, crazy. No, no like, well, this is really difficult to articulate because it destroys all the equilibrium that you have about your, your reality. And yeah. certain and certain beings like dolphins and whales, they were given this this information before Atlantis fell. Yeah. They were supposed to pass it over to us. And that's why a lot of them are beaching themselves now and they're dying off because they realize Well, not that, only that, but they weaponized that technology as well. Oh, sure. yeah. Um the, the, sure. there was a dolphin a lot of dolphin projects oh, uh, that yeah. basically were uh, attempts to hybridize dolphins and humans to weaponize them, of course. The, why would um, well, also, the, the, uh, to, for me, to us, like the whole, all, you know, if you want to go to space, you need to learn to breathe underwater. And that's what all of this um, is about. That's what all of this is about. And that, you know, when you look at the deep ocean floor, it looks like what they tell us is space, right? Yeah. It, and and you, when you see these kinds of, like, if you've seen those National Geographic videos where they take things that look almost like UFOs down to the bottom, and then they find civilizations living around like saline, saline, saline lakes that are like more, you know, dense and more viscous and whatever. It's like worlds inside of worlds inside of worlds. Yeah. And, and it's talk it them into them. You have to be able to dive into them as opposed to fly out of them. These translucent yeah. beings come from this too. Some yes, of these the translucent. translucent yes, yeah. yes. The, the, like you see those things at the bottom that are like translucent with just like a little bit of like bioluminescence yeah. in them. And it looks like some of these weird kind of creatures that sometimes we come across. Yeah, and, and they have that luciferin. And, and for luciferin to make a reaction, it needs a photoprotein to make that, that you know, reaction. And I think that's what it's looking for, that when a translucent being appears outside of water, it's looking for that reaction with somebody else yeah. to get that, you know. And yeah. To- so what if, I, what if I said that, okay, out of my experiences, because, you know, I, I have drowned more than once, um, and I should be ter- I'm completely terrified of water. I should be just, you know, I completely freaked out yeah. the water is my favorite thing ever yeah okay i i you can't I got out of water thing. i have to have water and it is the the most the closest thing i could come to to the deep that i experienced to that nothingness to that endlessness that is the real space yeah so mm, the wow. the whole the whole purpose that we're living um that land is is what it is now in this experience of creation i am not sure i mean i think this is an experiment obviously of our own creation but it is not land creation this is it's it's water (laughs) it's like and and above you know this is why i think it's enclosed okay so of it water what it is it's yes water yeah. it's water above it's water below water. it's where we're in water we're, yeah totally. we're in water we're in water world and yeah they're, water they're world like that's yep. what the aquariums are you know little bubbles of uh yep. of realities yeah it's uh, you know it's weird like I, are you a water sign no i mean are you kidding i'm a, a gemini with I'm a gemini. cancer me too Move. i'm a cancer 
I'm an Aquarius moon and double Gemini. So rising oh, wow. Gemini and Gemini. So, you know, I couldn't be more air. It's, that's, I've that's, transmuted a lot. But, that's, that's, that's proof. <laughs> but the bubbles in water, that's interesting. The bubbles in water are air. So your own little air bubbles, your own little worlds yeah. inside of the water. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a cancer. I have Gemini rising and I have, my moon is in Pisces. So I have all sorts of yeah. interesting, but yeah, like I, you know, I've always felt like we come from water and we're going back to water. Yeah. And water, I mean, yeah. you know, people would just say to me, God, you like died several times in water. Like, and you can't stay out of it. I mean, I remember when I was living on the Island and it was surrounded by ocean water, Vancouver Island, it's all cold water. Mm -hmm. I would, it, it wasn't Rikers Island. Well, yeah, you can, you can get out of it. Spoken like a true New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's and I'm so happy. Oh, God, I'm so relieved, right? Because when when all of this talk about space and space and space, so annoying. I was like, what is it that nobody seems to get this? And this is the most innate thing. In our being, because this is what we are actually Water. made of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the few molecules that have like come together, it's just like the saline. It's like the salt, yep. you know, creating the, the little formation of the body. Yeah. And we are frequency energy, energy water. I always refer, I always say, just be like water. We are water. <laughs> yeah. Bruce Lee was right. Yeah, Bruce, yeah. Hey, I love Bruce Lee. <laughs> I, yeah, I love Bruce Lee too. I mean, literally, he, like, he could, I mean, he could be a, a great reason to take him out would be that saying, right? That he really, like he's passing on the not like that's his knowledge, and it's amazing how many people don't really know that he said that or don't really even get it. We he's are, from Orion for sure. He is an be, Orion. Be what you be what you are. The other thing is is um, what you were just saying about saline and salt. I find it interesting how they're always trying to get people to reduce their salt intake to reduce salt consumption to are they you know yeah. salt that's available is like salt that's like fake salt like bad salt you know um, yeah yet people like we are salt and we are water you need to be salty and you need to be water yeah not sugar they they, no. they, they they try and convince you that you need you know that you need sugar that you so they remove the salt from everything but they put the sugar and you know it's like they replace yeah. salt with sugar it looks like, it's, isn't it funny how it looks alike too? It's almost like a counterfeit, like the exact opposite. Exactly. I've always, so I have this, yeah. and I'm, this is something that may come up in like a future show, but I'll just toss this past you guys since we're tossing our theories out. What do you guys think about the idea of sugar being programmable matter? I think that's amazingly probably very right on. I think that's why they're pouring it into us there because they're trying to change our DNA with it. And it can like this, this program, it could self replicate anything. It's, it could be it's crystalline. It's crystalline yes. substance. It, it's, if you look at it under a microscope, it's cubes. So yeah. they always like, right. And if you notice like the, um, I think even some of these sugars that they're presenting as more healthy sugars, the same thing. It's like no. the same, I, I mean, like, you know, I was a sugar addict and um, a lot of my deprogramming came along with stopping eating sugar. It became yeah. much easier That's for me. I'm trying now. You know, and um, it's, you know, think about this. They, 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 and we should have, this is something we should have recognized a long time ago. They advertise um, the cartoons through children's sugar cereal. So they know that those kids are going to eat that while they're watching the cartoon. And it's almost like that, that sugar in the body can pick up the kind of, and they're putting out all kinds of frequencies and cartoons. Well, the with glucose it. interacts with the, with the brain itself. Right. But even with just, with, if it's in your body and they're presenting certain sounds and frequencies and whatever, it and almost it like meat. They meet, right? And, and what it took for me to put this thing together about sugar was when um, the stupid smoking machines started becoming popular and you have everyone out like smoking French toast, basically. And I noticed that like, you know, I noticed that people, I had some friends who like very early on got into that. And for some reason, as they got into that, we stopped being friends. I was like, that's just super weird. And, like they just act weird. And like, it, they just, it was bizarre. And then I f was researching something about, I don't know if I was researching something about that or something about Tesla, but I found a quote from Nikola Tesla from like the 20s or something, whatever, that said, in the future, men will smoke these little machines that will taste good and they will think they're cool and they will be under mind control. 
So I started to look at those smoking things. That stuff is a crystalline substance. You're right? It's sugar. The e you feel the They're yeah, smoking vape. sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And those vaping machines. So are, much smoke comes out of those things. So too. much. So it goes yeah. everywhere. It goes and they let you do it inside. It goes everywhere. Right. And it, it even it fucks up your like consciousness. And like you're, cereal like, oh. flavors and shit. Yes. Like, yeah. It smells like gummy bears and French toast. Right. And like you see this big tough dude and he's like smoking French toast. Right. It's like, but <laughs> these char the, most of these machines are also charged on the computer. So oh, shit. transferring information. So you have this thing, it, it, it could be downloading things. I, I mean, who the fuck knows what could be happening? But I think it, I think you're onto something because, um, well, I haven't really eaten sugar for 20 years. Um, don't crave it. I, Once you I stop eating it, you don't crave it. it. Yeah, you, I, it I, I drink lemonade like though, that's poison. my thing. It's like a poison. I, I can't even do dark chocolate. I can't do any of it, period. Um, and I don't even eat fruit either and this will freak people out okay because yeah. i don't eat any of that i, I don't around. i love water fruit. Around. i eat i eat very i eat very little fruit and fruit that has a low amount of sugar in it like i'll eat green apples and i'll eat some berries yeah. but not a lot of fruit um but i've been observing the way people act like right as they're eating sugar for a while because i've been on a diet without sugar for i mean i'm a human being once in a while i eat whatever i want but i mostly eat a very 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 clean diet um, but when I started to have that observation about that stuff, I started to think, wait a second, if it can be that, then it's all sugar. And I it was such a sugar addict. Lots of people that I know that are like us, when they, they ha also used to eat a lot of sugar, at, especially during years of heavy use and things like that. Like, it's very fascinating. And um, think, I mean, think about how it, there's been this increase in sugar, I mean, it, it never, there's, they, they, they pass laws to put less salt in things, less hydrogenated oils, less fats, but sugar keeps increasing. It's a drug. It's a, it's it's a, a drug. drug. Sure. But it's also, like, I, I totally, completely believe what you say, because if I you agree. think about, if you think about the crystalline nature of what we are, and I'm yep. not talking about silica. Silica is the counterfeit, okay? Yep. So the whole silica is the counterfeit they're putting that in everything too right that's yeah. all the um, hijacking bullshit yeah yep so but the pure crystalline essence crystalline. is a harmonic it's a frequency yep. of consciousness which once you're there all of these things can't even attach themselves to it right you just can't it's like those two um those two frequencies can't be in the same space at the same time yep so we know that silica is the counterfeit to the real crystalline harmonic of what we are, which is also right. water in water in the saline yep. and the purity. So they start with counterfeiting everything from the beginning and putting it in it through any means possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we've got people in, if you look at the generations, you can look at it like an experiment. Mm -hmm. This is really, I mean, it, I've been watching it like an experiment since I was young and I have seen huge changes and I, it, it's per 10 years, every 10 years, every generation, you will see how this experiment is going. Mm -hmm. Now their minds have been altered. Their DNA has been altered already. It's already been counterfeited. They've already been, you know, engineered to merge right to merge so that they don't even notice it yeah and i totally agree with you i think sugar is a part of the same thing as silicone to hijack that's the other reason why they altered the televisions did they have to do that right no. i mean did they have to make them plasma they didn't have to make them plasma they didn't have to make them what they are now you know they didn't it's just one step further in the membrane. Mm -hmm. They're creating a membrane field around us, but it's the counterfeit membrane. It's not the original C. C. Yeah. C. 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 The, the, the original is capable of remembering. The counterfeit is capable of being programmed. Right. It's, it's a different thing, but to, it's, it's, you know, to one who isn't aware they wouldn't notice they'd be like oh okay like this new idea comes into my head they may think they're remembering something they're being programmed mm -hmm. you know what i mean 
And have you ever, and, and along with this engineering, this, this programming over generations of what they've been mastering, comes a lot more personality disorders because they're empty yep. vessels, right? Yeah. No, no, I'm not saying personality disorder people are empty vessels. I'm saying they've created mm -hmm. in this engineering of the population, they're creating pockets of it which have these traits also. Mm -hmm. And worse than ever, like worse than ever. So the psychopathy gene, mm -hmm. which is mostly, you know, I mean, if you are a psychopath, then they're going to hire you in government. They're going to hire you in educational systems. They're going to hire you, you know, where they want you to completely annihilate the reals yep. so that you just keep them in containment. So we can really see the evolution of this engineering mm -hmm. in terms of just generations. And now, uh, you know, we're at generation Z. Yeah. Yeah. Cannons, you know, the, a population where remote control and God, you know, anything goes. Um, and why do you think that, I mean, this whole thing where they're pushing the whole, I mean, I've never in my life, this whole zombie thing, come on. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, it's not like it's that interesting. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not interesting at all. Yeah. And people have a compulsion to watch it every week, too. It's, it's like they're but it's mind-controlling it. because... Yeah, for sure. It's programming. basically they, programming everybody that everybody's already dead. Well, they also are programming people to think that when the zombie apocalypse happens, that's what it will look like so they don't recognize that we're already been living in it and that everybody around you is a fucking zombie. Let the, let the, let the power go out just for a couple of weeks. It will turn into the walking dead without zombies. If we have no power, no electricity, nobody has access to their money, food's gone, you know, nobody can get food for themselves. Most people would die in a couple of weeks. You know, it would be, it would be like the walking dead without zombies. People would be fighting over gas and everything. So – what about also, let's just say they, we know that they target our signatures upon entry. So upon entry, yeah. they target our signatures. They know exactly where we are, where we're coming in at the point of that exactly. You got it. They're, they're tracking us so, through incarnations. Yeah. Right. yeah. So then, then they grab us and then they put us in a whatever lineage they want. They insert us. They call that a successful drop. Yep. That's the terminal. <laughs> So when they insert us into whatever they want to, whatever vessel they want to, whatever lineage they think is going to be the best oppressor for you, or the reverse, they'll put you in a lineage to make you the most complacent and happy as well. Soul mm -hmm. transfers as well. So exactly. So they call that a successful drop. They retain your original name upon entry because you, you do come in with a signature that relates to a name frequency. They always have a, a remnant of that in your name, by the way. It's, it's really because they, they do a counterfeit on your identity. Mm -hmm. So they retain something of the original name vibration. They just twist it around, invert it. So there's always like tons that you can see through when you really want to tap into what the original was before you were accessed at that coordinate but when they successfully drop you then you know the, that whole setup begins again yeah right? wow. well i didn't know that about the name that's really interesting yeah and whatever your whatever your name is given to you bears a a very small resemblance to the original. So there's, and it has to be that way because you have come with your signature into this reality. So you cannot be a counterfeit of yourself. So they know that. And your Therefore, spirit body has a scent and a, and a, and a signature right. as well. They can trace yeah. you every, we all have yeah. a signature or sent to us in our dream time. And that's why they so, want our physical body shit. Because if your physical body is shit, then your spirit body is shit. We have five bodies, right? We have our aura, our astral, our material body, our soul, and our spirit. The soul keeps them all enclosed within us, right? Mm -hmm. And if they're 
aligned. We are this dynamo between our heart and our mind and everything. We are this powerful beast. They do not want that, you know? So they, they're keeping us, our physical body, so it's like a domino effect. All your body's just wither and, and your aura and your soul and everything's just out of line. So, you know, it's a game, you know? We're, we're the true, you know, we're being played with, conducted like an orchestra. Unless know? this is the projected version of the original body the original body may possibly be in stasis with the real earth because this whole yeah, matrix yeah. reality has yeah. taken over the earth i herself. agree it's a possibility so our real bodies may yeah. very well be in stasis and this is the first projected consciousness from stasis and from that point we have created other projected realities so it's like an infinite system an infinity based system and I think we have all this when we're when we're born, there's like a spiritual blueprint laid out for us. Yeah. But they're on all timelines. So you can go on all these different mm -hmm. spiritual paths infinitely, you know, and, and during this incarnation, you're gonna get polarized towards one of them. And it's just a matter of which one you're getting polarized or and now they're all bleeding together. Well that, that they're ble and also I have another theory with that is that when we come in with those blueprints and there's all those possibilities. People running projects and programs know that. And so the alters they program us with are actually us from these other, these other possibilities, timelines, and realities. It isn't just something that's totally fake and created. They're creating something that you're doing on one of these other strands, yeah. timelines, and whatever. And yep. that, that, you know, the way we overcome this is, you know, like it's almost like the, the strongest one wins. And so, like, if you allow yourself to be too influenced by what they're doing with one of these others, what they're creating with one of these other possibilities, and you become that, you know what I mean? That's kind of when we see these sort of, you know, alter kind of take, take over. But to be, you know, uh, we have the right, since we are here, to integrate all of the positive aspects of all of those things. And that is our work. And as long as we're working to integrate those and to be yeah. sort of the master of all of our possible selves and all of our possible bodies, then it reduces the possibility for us to be programmed into alter that is a bad version of us. Well, and that's why they're using clones and replicants. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because through that, because they know that our own minds are very strong. So when we really start being conscious of our consciousness, they need to do something different. And with the clones and the replicants, they can actually impact our consciousness through the actions of the clone. Yeah. Yep. So that it's an attempt to corrupt mm -hmm. our own being and our own possibility and our own um, purity. Okay. Yeah. So they want the bleed through to happen because in this state of consciousness, sometimes consciousness itself can't tell the difference between the consciousness of corrupt clone to, you know, your own body consciousness. And this is what they try to do. And if you see the movie dark city, it's a lot like that. If you remember, they would be removing with a syringe people's memories and they would be placing them and injecting them into other people. Wow. Oh, Okay. Wow. It's very much like that. It's yeah. like they can do anything they want with any of that. And it's all in an attempt to try and stop our progress, to stop mm -hmm. our unlimited eternal being. Yeah. You know, or I should say our infinite being, not eternal. Eternal is the, again, counterfeit because they use the eternal yeah. to get you locked into the whole matrix and the it's like immortality immortality is right. a trap right so exactly and it's different from infinite infinite being the all you know you're just everywhere all at once yeah. and you're in you are that spark of you know thought creation but the counterfeit is immor is the whole Basis of oh yeah you're immortal so I'm just going to trap you and, and keep you locked into over and over and over again under the guise that you're immortal under the guise that you know well immortal is always immortal is always vampire it's always parasite it's always needing some other energy to run on whereas infinite is like being that creator of the amount of energy that you need for yeah. to sustain yourself it's yeah. yeah yeah and I mean in relationships too if you look at how energy works um, I can always tell. I mean, every this is, immortal has one flaw, though, right? You know, there's yeah. always that you can either cut off the head or something. There's always an end to that immortal. 
totally. Yeah. yeah. There can only be one. <laughs> the Highlander. Yeah. The Highlander. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, when you think of how we, we are meant to generate our own energy, our own chi, our own source, and you think of how many people around us are always grasping for others' energy, you know, and their actions are based on um, the supply and demand of that energy. So, you know, if you don't give it to them, they end up acting out and demonizing you or, you know, making you into... We're, we've been fear imprinted too. We wear it like an right. armor, you know? <laughs> so, you know, you, I always say, do you generate your own energy? Do, are you reliant on taking it from another source? Because I, I've had so many experiences where, I mean, people that are not cognizant of any of these things would say to me, I need your light. Okay. Spoken like a true vampire. So it's in us. It's all in us. Every memory membrane is in us. This is what we're coming back to. We're coming back to the point of origin in that, in the initial membrane. That's why it's a cell, one cell. Two cells are splitting, you know? The old earth and the new earth. The, the old membrane and the new membrane. I also think that the, um, our memories are stored in our bodies. People think that our memories are stored in our brain. And I think that's why they're so intent on taking us out of our bodies because the mind, like the mind will play tricks on you. The mind can be confused and remember with clone stuff, uh, you know, like mind can play tricks on you. Mind can, yeah, the memory. Yeah. The, our bodies, the body, like, you know, there's all sorts of interesting like therapies that, that, that you know, like somatic therapy, somatic, uh, somatic experiencing and MD, EMDR and stuff like that, that really prove. I used to think that like what was going on in my head was the most important thing. And I'd pay attention to all this nonsense. And, and I've gotten to the point now, and Randy, and I've talked about this before, like when, when important memories or things that I need to pay attention to come up, I will have a physical reaction that is accompanying it. If I just have some idea coming into my head and it's just in my head, I don't pay any attention to it anymore. There has to be, like or like a, a big stew pot of memory. That's, it, you know? it is. I think, I, mean, I, I even think that that is so, like some well, of our purposes here is that we're like visceral. data when recording you, device. When, when, when a memory comes in, it may be a, a mental process from your perception, but it's visceral in the sense that what are, what are your responses? Your eyes will dilate. You'll get goosebumps. You may start to feel the energy centering into the abdomen. Abdominal. Your whole body responds, yeah. Your whole body begins to respond yep. to it. Because and the solar plexus, it gets anchored. Yeah, and, yeah. and Those, those things all are manifesting as a result. I've called it cellular memory. I don't know if that's accurate or if it is body memory, but it appears as though it has a locus. I don't even think it has a locus. I think it's non-locational. Non well, I think our bodies are, it's like a receiver or like a receptor from our memory that is like, it's almost, so we were talking before about like the us that we originally were, the one that we're trying to get to that is the same. Yeah. And it's like, that's where all this information in memory is. And our body is like the perfect um, receptor or radar detector or whatever. And when it's true, the body has a physical reaction. When it's not true, when it's an idea playing around in your head, it's looping, it's circular, you can't stop thinking about it, whatever. Like when it comes in the body, it's like, okay, that's confirmation, that's all you need. You now, you, you, you integrate that and th that you understand that that is your truth. It's these other things that are not anchored to anything that are, sometimes they're really interesting and fascinating and sometimes they're really appealing and seductive and we it's want to play with reasons. them. Yeah. It's one of the reasons too why breath is so important. I know I, I, I preach this eternally, mm -hmm. but the importance of the chi and, yeah. the, and the breath everything, really is the place where you can begin. That's the command and control center where we pull this energy in. That energy actually is self-circulating. You know, there's something to it. I know I've gone back and forth with a number of people about uh, breatharianism. I think there's something to that. I think you do reach a point where that's zero point energy. Uh, can I do that yet? No. But I can tell you that when I focus on breath and when I get real centered, there's an energetic component to that, but there's a centering that occurs that allows all of those 
I'm gesticulating, which is bad on radio. All of those emanations of energies to kind of settle in and get real focused. So again, you know, when we're experiencing trauma, what is the first thing that happens? Generally, you're out of breath. You have your respiratory rate goes up, but you're not actually intaking air. It's all involuntary muscular. And your blood pressure soars. You basically, they've thrown your body into a panic alert. Whereas if the response is to redirect inward and to use the breath, you can actually start to gain control of that. It immobilizes you. Yeah, when you have yeah. panic and fear, a chemical spreads throughout your body and it's yeah. like a downward spiral to hell. You know, it really is. And it, it's, it's horrible. It immobilizes oh, isn't, your whole everything. Isn't breath related to creation? Yes. The mind made manifest through breath. Yeah. Prana. Prana. So that, that's the, the basis of, yeah. you know, our experience. I also think that soul is, is memory. Soul is engineered to relate to this holographic infinity system realities. And I think that there's two different kinds of memory. I think that soul is memory connected to everything from the inception of coming in here and being, you know, recycled and karma and all that. And I think that there's spirit memory. Soul memory is connected to the body, the physical body, by the way, I think. And I think the spirit memory is the original source outside of all constructs, which will lead you into the, the sea to see, mm-hmm. will lead you into the deep and it will give you completely different um, gnosis that it is related to your true body of being of all that you are. And I think when you merge that in with this, then this, this version, this soul memory version will be overridden with what is true. And that's when we can step into the becoming of what we really are. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. it makes absolute sense. I, it's I almost really so, like yeah. yeah, I like that. Like the soul, the soul. I was talking about that the other day, the becoming, yeah. Like we are becoming. We're, we're, we we call ourselves human beings. We're we're a human becoming, and we're in this meta metamorphosis state. It's our quickening. Yeah. 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 It's it's uh, this feels to me like um and you know like I've said this before but it's actually nothing like what I, we're, I think we're experiencing right now. This is like the hugest transformational period, and yeah. it's felt it's different than I thought it would be. Like I thought like the transformational period would be when I have all these like realizations about things, but it's not like right now, the things that I'm interested in are actually like fairly hardcore reality things. It matters what we do here in this material body, in this yes. world right now. Yeah, yeah. And this has been an extremely, um, this past few months for me has been extremely stressful, but enlightening. It, 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 it's been different than all of the other sort of transformations I've had before. This one is about like, it matters what I do here now, not about all these fancy ideas I have about how, whatever. It's all about what I do right here, right now that matters. Like everything counts and yeah, everything counts. And it's, and it's not, um, I've also had this, you know, we love doing this magical, mystical, metaphysical, imaginative stuff. And it's great and we need to do it. But able to, to be able to do that in a way that's healthy and helpful and yeah. useful to us, we also have to be extremely grounded in reality. We cannot have our heads in the clouds without having our feet firmly planted on the ground. If not, it's a recipe for disaster. Well, uh, and, and that's... It, you're grounded, it, you get attacked. You get, you get attachments for sure. Well, but if we can't get it right in the 3D, we're not getting it right anywhere. Yep. On any level. Yeah. So this is what a lot of people, and you're absolutely right, a lot of people fail to see the importance of, you know, having to be able to do the alchemy in physicality, in the 3D reality, because we came in here. Like, we didn't come in here to be out there. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. 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 So... It, it's all here and we have to be reflecting what we are in that 3d so you know if if we're not getting this right and we're pretending to be doing things 
that we ourselves aren't doing ourselves here, mm -hmm. then yep. it, it, it's a hit. It's not true. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. not true. <laughs> so this is where it's at. Otherwise we wouldn't have had to come in, in, yeah. in, not out. I think this is one of the most important times on, on this planet ever. Yeah. Right now, you know, at least in this time around. Well, yeah. I'll redirect back to what you said at the beginning, Ron. When you said you have the sense, and many of us have the sense, this is the last time around. My understanding of the game that we're in, because on one level, it is a game. We came in this time to resolve something that has gone on too long. This is the last rodeo, as far as I think our soul group is concerned. I don't think the universe supports the energy that can maintain this, yeah. the circularity, nor do I think they counted on one thing that has happened. We woke up and we learned what the rules were because the one thing they didn't tell us was what the rules were. But we figured it out. And it is actually what we've all been talking about. It is that this does count. But the attachment to this is a fatal flaw. We do this right because this is the process that we agreed to come in and do. And they, they tied one arm behind our back, one of our feet with a chain, and blinded one of our eyes and said, okay, now walk through this reality. And we not only did that, we liberated ourselves, got the third eye, and basically said, you know what? Fuck you guys. We're doing it right this time, and we're ending it. Yeah. Yep, and we're taking back our creation. And, and uh, no, nobody's here by mistake. If you're on this physical plane, you're here for a reason. There's, there's no one here by accident. We're all meant to be here right now, for sure. Yeah, assuming that you are a sentient spirit yeah. being. Yeah. Well, the Mayans believed, you know, that, that life exists inside that, the macro spiral. Anything outside of it and that, does that, not that, have that, I'm glad. Talk about that. Talk about that, 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 that spiral. That's, I know that's important <laughs> to you, and I actually am intrigued by the spiral as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, the, even the Mayans believe that, you know, anything with that soul exists inside of that macro spiral, and any entity outside of it, it doesn't have a soul. You know, it doesn't have life. And it, we, we all... We're, we're in this never ending. It's, that's how we, that's, that's how everything you could look in, in even our finger. Finger. Uh, I was going to ask you, yeah. Yeah. you know, everything is, is in spiral, you know, it's spiral galaxy, everything, you know, that's, spiral that's how tattoo. We're yeah. All right. Spiral tattoo. <laughs> I was, I was trying to figure out what those were when I see in the videos, I'm like, what it, does she have? All yeah. It, this is a lot of people just, yeah. The they, snake, they, right? Snake. It's yeah. a spiral. So yeah. this is this is a much more elaborate extension of how they use time through the spiral. Yes. Okay. So that's yeah. why it's like that. This is the spiral. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to screenshot that so that the people who can't see the video can see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Laura is not wrapped in snakes or serpents. No. She's wrapped she in the spiral this body is. of time, which both exists around her and doesn't exist at all. Exactly. But it actually is, you know, it actually is a very efficient metaphor and a reality for understanding where we're at because we're not going in circles. We started at a very finite point, and as we wind up through this, we are, the term evolve is one way to say it. Ascension would be another. That's become very cloying. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> We're moving through a process, and the process is that spiral, which is which is infinite. Yeah, and they believe, you know, that it would anything that everything exists within that giant macro spiral, or my, you know, that then and they would believe that it rises right next to the Pleiades. And you know, we did find a, a portal next to the the Pleiades right there, so it lines up with with you know everything and anything. They, I think they call the, the, the universe the Teos or Teos or something like yeah. that, the Mayans, you know, and they, they, anything that existed outside of this is, doesn't have material form. Anything within material form exists in that macro spiral. Every, anything with, without a material form exists outside of it. Yeah, that's brilliant. Fascinating stuff. 
we're running Absolutely. we're kind of running down the clock here quickly and gosh i just looked at it and went holy crap this is like i, know, I guess i guess you could say like anything outside of the spiral has no essence okay yeah yeah time um, just flew by time flew by we're gonna definitely have to do this again <laughs> yeah we should do like a series now we have like the, we broke our we like broke <laughs> our, we got our foot in a little bit now yeah. we're like friends we know each other a little well. <laughs> now we can really go in well, not that only was two that, hours. But I, the, the, the literally what Lada was going through in the last thing that she discussed there, and I, I was gobsmacked. I was like, that just dropped a puzzle piece in. I need to think about that. I, I, I was stunned because it dropped a puzzle piece in. And that's, I've been saying this for a while. The metaphor is we're all puzzle pieces. We're all coming together yeah. to form this picture. And it's the funny thing about puzzle pieces, they're all broken until they come together. <laughs> yeah. and, right. and we are the body, all together, all of us, we are actually one body, one universe, mm -hmm. one infinite verse. Mm -hmm. Each of us holds, you know, a precious decoder <laughs> yeah. that we came in with. Yeah. We're so all little library cards. Now we come access, together, and this is the thing we're info. We are converging together. We are converging at this precipice. Yeah. You know, For everything we are. The biggest secret so we is. We started here. <laughs> <laughs> we started here and we went through, through what appears linear. Okay, that's right. what these are linear. We went through the serpent type of experience, relooping eternity of our own consciousness until we created linear time now we are coming to that point in the center the dot of it all wow infinity yeah wow well i am hoping that this is going to be the first of many conversations For guys sure. before we go um why don't you let the listeners know um where they can find your work um lara go ahead um, my website is www.sovereignkey.com, S-O-V-E-R-E-I-G-N-K-I.com, which is Sovereign World. And um, YouTube, your YouTube too. My YouTube is Sovereign Key. Lots of good videos lately, guys. And, yeah, and you, Lada, uh, Lada, you and your husband, George, are doing amazing work on those videos. I, I am addicted. Yeah, George is a good dude too. And then yeah, we, well, we would like to really talk with, with him and him too, because we'll have each of you back individually. Is, Lada, we'll have you back with George. Yeah. yeah. This Sounds is great. Important. I feel like a lot of connections were made. We'll, we'll get them as we, we go back and listen to all of this. Uh, Ra, tell people where they can find you as well. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. You can find me at the mystical spiral.com and you can also find me at exploring the car with host rock Castaldo on YouTube. And I'm on the para X radio network every Friday night, spiral radio 8 PM on Fridays. And on Podomatic too, by the way. Yeah. Podomatic iTunes. Uh, I think they're yeah. very, so, there's a many, a whole bunch great of great shows. Great stuff. Great stuff, yeah. guys. We're so blessed. Anybody wants to email me too? It's uh, Moon Tribe Seven Twelve at Hotmail. I do reading. Oh, Lana. Very Sovereign Keys, which is a bit different. It's um, S O V E R E I G N K E E S, as in keys, at gmail dot com. Excellent. So yes, yeah. both of you are are, are teachers, counselors. Uh, people who work with healing modalities and wholeness concepts and all of that's really important. So uh, we'll get that out in written form when we put the show out as well. Emily, any final thoughts for you? No, I just, I, you know, um, I was having a rough day, man. I've had a rough couple of weeks. I was, we were like, Randy was like, hey, even a half an hour before the show, Randy's like, you sure you wanted the show? And I was, and he, like, he, I, was I was feeling like, that too. Yeah. I was like, I'm fixed. I was like, something is, I felt like something was trying to stop me from doing this, but I was like, no, we're doing it no matter what. And I'm, I feel much better. I feel, yeah. So I'm super glad that we did this. I'm glad we all finally connected. And um, yeah, it's been really cool. And yeah, I think uh, we're all finding our little abilities and meeting each other and it's all coming together like Voltron, you know, or yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, 
and I also, I think there's, I think we need, we can help each other. I think each one of us has like some area where we have a lot of knowledge or experience or things that we're really good at or something that we have a lot of energy or passion yeah. for that, you know, I think one of the things that they've done to us besides keep us separate is make, uh, is, you know, some of us have physical ailments. Some of us have had emotional issues. Some of us have just different things. And I feel like if we can get together and sort of like share experiences, share our skills, help each other, practice our healing kind of techniques on each other in a consensual way that, that you know, I think that like that, there's a lot of power in that. I think we can yeah. make something much greater than the individual parts. And um, when it, whenever we make these connections, I look forward to that part of it. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you for having us. The energy that you and Ra have is incredible. Like Emily and Ra, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's real high energy stuff. Yeah, I, I worked 12 like, hours today. Like, you know, we're like, hey. Yeah, she, when, I, when I was watching her go, I'm like, oh my God, it's me. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. That's so we're awesome. both cancers. Yeah. I know, that's like amazing. When is your birthday, Ra? July 12th. Okay, July 12th, yeah. 78. I'm June 28th, June 29th, sorry, June 29th. Um, You're a 29 baby, of course, right? Yeah. Yeah, 29. Yeah. That's a 29, special day. May 29th. June 29th is always a special day. Randy? Yeah. May 6th. May 6th? Yeah. Taurus. Yeah. Taurus. Mm -hmm. That's the week of fertility, that May week. Apparently, the May child. The May, May child. Yeah. Yeah. May yeah. goes back to Mariana. That was my father's May son. Get it? <laughs> that's I, I, yes, he that's was his father's May I'm son. Jet. And I grew up on Devonshire and May son. So <laughs> there you go. May day, May day. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. So let's wrap Synergy. it up. Yeah. Randy, you want to you you do the outgo or should I? I'll take care of that. All right. It's all about synergy, babe. And we'll just, uh, we'll just kind of uh, leave it there. A lot of great uh, like We didn't steps. even go in, into anything about our lives or anything. We just talked about like. <laughs> no, we didn't even get personal. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. All right. That's going to wrap it up for this show. Um, come back again. See us off planetradio.com. This is Off Planet Radio. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Go spiral into it. See you the next time. Spiral out. <laughs> nice. Thanks.